Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. It's been a while, <laughs> I understand that. I have moved. It took about three weeks to um, figure out the internet and the broadband and all that kind of stuff. And I haven't uploaded anything yet. So should this upload properly, my aim is to do the readings um, a little bit more uh, frequent or more regularly. Right? So. Most of the stuff is still in boxes, <laughs> um, but um, it's quite exciting, to be fair, being in a new flat, being in a new place. Anyway, we're looking at the week of October the 7th to the 13th, and there's a full moon on the 13th, but because it's the last day of the energy for the week, <coughs> excuse me, um, all I can say is that on the last day of that week, whatever we have to go through, if it hasn't been dealt with, will be amplified, right? If that makes sense. Okie dokie. So, before we go into the star signs, because obviously we're in the star sign of Libra, so that's the one we are starting with. We're looking at the overall energy of the week, October the 7th to the 13th. Here we go. Let's see what the guides have got for us. That's actually awesome. <laughs> like I said, we're looking at the week of October 7th to the 14th, 2019. And we have the Shaman of Birth and the Hunter of Vision, which means it is time for new beginnings. Makes me feel uh, great because I am in the middle of new beginnings. So, um, and because we have the Hunter of Vision, all the guides are saying is, everything that is stale needs to go, right? Everything that, that needs to begin that needs to start, wants to start. And sometimes we can block that, right? That's why we have the hunter of vision. Focus on what it is you want rather than what holds you back. So let's just say you, you are in a situation where, um, you know, just like myself, um, I can relate to that because um, I moved out from a relationship and um, there are parts of me that kind of think like, okay, I would like to start over, but I'm not sure I'm ready. Reality is after three weeks, you're not ready. The point I'm making is, if with the new beginning, should my thoughts go backwards, that's what the guides are warning us about, saying like, don't go into what has been, be grateful it happened, <laughs> including all the shitty bits, right? But focus on new beginnings. And the hunter of vision is basically saying to all of us, focus on what it is you would like to achieve. And that means you have to stop. Just stop, pay attention to how you tick. Pay attention to what isn't quite working. Where are the issues? And then focus, in other words, manifest for them to get better. So the over energy is all about new beginnings, which is good because once you have a little breakthrough, the whole energy of the week will follow it, if that makes sense, right? So that's the over energy for the week, October 7th, to the 13th, 2019, and now we're going into the first star sign for the week, which is Libra, because that's the star sign we're in. So here's for you Libras, let's see what the guides have got for you this week. You have heard me say this Many times when I do a reading that I say the messages for the individual star signs oftentimes follow and obviously directly relate to the overall energy of the week. Obviously as they should because, you know, we're not functioning in isolation. <clears throat> and when the overall energy of, for the week is a certain way, then oftentimes what the guides are saying to us makes sense because it relates to that space in time, 7th to the 13th of October. Here's what the guides are saying to you, Libra. You have the butterfly and the swan. We're talking about new beginnings. The butterfly is telling you you're absolutely ready, right? You're no longer a caterpillar, you're no longer stuck, right? You are, you are ready. And the swan is the animal that tells you um, that you're waterproof. The depiction that I have of this swan here is of an adult swan. 
And like many water birds, they have to be waterproof before they can swim, if that makes sense. And because I haven't ever sworn here, what they're saying to you is, you're ready and you have enough experience, life experience, to get through everything. So in other words, you're fully protected, but you're also ready to look ahead. Here's the thing, because butterflies, technically speaking, most of them at least, have a very short lifespan. So what they're saying is, you don't have to rush into things, but you need to focus on your thoughts and make sure you don't have too many or let them go too quickly. Right? So there's more than just the message of, of uh, yes, you're ready. But what the guides are saying is, this is the main message, focus and trust that no matter what life throws at you, you will be fine, you can handle it. Okie dokie, that was Libra going into Scorpio. Here we go. Scorpio's energy for the week feels a little bit heavier. You have the caribou, also known as the reindeer, which is an animal <coughs> with a split hoof, which means when the terrain gets difficult, this, this animal doesn't sink in. So what that means to you, there will be times this week where you feel it's probably all too much and everything is slow, and all the guides are saying is, yes, it actually may be slow, right? You're absolutely right about that. But you're not sinking in, which means it doesn't make a difference to you because you're still moving. Right? So remember, this is the week about new beginning, hunter of visions. And all they're saying is keep going and don't despair because you also have the river otter. And, and the otter is basically the message of the otter is to remember that, you know, don't go it alone. Right. The beaver is the builder of bridges and it's sort of related to that image of the otter. The otter is the animal that basically holds hands with other otters so they don't drift apart when they sleep. So it's just symbolism. What the guides are saying is, yes, maybe things are difficult, right? And in your case, what they're saying to you is, it probably isn't a good time to go it all alone and to, um, you know, have a lot of arguments this week, right? Find either the guide or the person that you trust and that trusts you and that you can hold hands with this week to, to manifest what it is you really want. But first and foremost, remember this, you have the caribou, which is an animal with antlers. And every time you have antlers, it means you're protected. The guides are around you. <coughs> there isn't much that can happen to you this week. So don't worry and don't fear, right? That's the most important thing. Okay, doc, that was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. Let's see what we got. And like I said, we're looking at the week of October the 7th to the 13th, 2019. Wow. <laughs> Sagittarius. We have the, the dancer of joy and the shaman of throng. What that really means is good news are coming. We have the dancer of joy, which means this week, 7th, of, uh, 7th to the 13th of October, is the week where you can rejoice, where you kind of go like, yeah, things are working. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the shaman of song. What they're saying to you is everything that feels positive to you this week, everything that feels like, yeah, I got this, right? You have to be lighthearted about it and keep up that energy. Shaman of song always just means, you know, we're beings of, we're beings of vibration. And um, when you vibrate, vibrate higher, um, the energy helps you align. The more aligned you are, the more you see, the less any problems can actually uh, work against you. All the guides are saying is keep a high, higher energy up this week. But you have the dancer of joy. So for your star sign, good news are coming in, right? Really, really important. So remember that positivity is in the matter in the manner of speaking is your focus for this week, right? That was Sagittarius going into Capricorn. I just need to open this up so I can see all the star signs. So I don't get confused. <laughs> so Capricorns, <coughs> drawn to a different deck. Capricorns. All right. For Capricorns, what the guides are saying to you this week, you have the TP and the God of Rain. So what they're saying is, 
focus on everything and anything that is happening at home. Do you overthink? Are you overthinking at home? Is it really a place like a safe haven? Right? All they're saying is your home is your safe haven. Your home is supposed to be your temple. Your home is the place where you can retreat to or should be able to retreat to and be 150% yourself. The God of Rain is about renewal, you know, tears are sacred medicine, for instance. All the guys are saying is this week for <coughs> a couple of gods, excuse me. I have this problem with my asthma, it flares up as it gets autumn, and I'm right in the middle of it. <coughs> so for Capricorn, what the guys are saying is, look at your home, either the place itself, and see what can be tweaked that makes life there more harmonious, um, or look into your thought patterns that you apply when you're at home. Right? Maybe the, the, the home just needs um, cleansing. And also, should you feel emotional, then this is a really good week to allow yourself to cry this out, allow yourself to release it, right? But because over energy wise, we have the hunter of vision, uh, don't forget your focus. Always trust that nothing ever stays difficult. And I know it's difficult when you're in it, but that's the message the guides are saying. Remember, your energy is what you attract on. So if your energy is low, you very likely attract low energy, and that has to do with situations and people, right? So remember this, look at your home, you know, assess if it needs a good cleanse, you know, retreat into your, new, in, into your home, um, have a good cry if, if, uh, if, if it is important, and um, focus on, on going forward. What is it you want to do? Okie dokie, that was Capricorn, going into Aquarius, and here we go. Okay, now we're coming to energies or to a, to, to a star sign that is asked to be more forceful. Okay, you have the dancer of lies, the dancer of lies, and the ancestor of exile. Don't allow anyone to take the piss. It's that simple. <laughs> Don't allow anyone to lie to you. Even a white lie is a lie, right? Make sure that the people around you are honest. You can trust them. They're not doing stuff or, mani or manipulate you in any shape or form because this is the week for you to tell them, if you keep this up, or I'm telling you not to keep this up, I'm telling you to change so that we meet each other 100% on a trust basis and I know I can trust you. If not, you will have to go. You have the ancestor of exile, which means that, that you give chances to people and keep them in your life for quite a while before finally you've had enough. And all the guides are saying, this is the week where if you feel something is off here and I tried my best to make this work and if it isn't working, Good luck, good riddance. Right? Sounds a bit harsh, but um, it is important sometimes to say, I'm no longer taking this, right? And I'm no longer doing this. And then people need to know that you have boundaries. Okie dokie. Usually it sounds much more, much harsher than the guides mean it. It has also to do with the symbolism. It's quite a, a, a harsh symbolism because they want to wake you up. They gotta go, oi, pay attention. Why right? would you lie to your best friend? No, you wouldn't, right? So why are you being lied to? And lies doesn't mean, you know, direct lies where someone is trying to de deceive you, but it is these small things, you know, where people are not quite truthful kind of thing. And that's what the guides are saying is can't, uh, can't continue, right? There was Aquarius going into Pisces. Guess what this is? It's my favorite star sign because I'm a Pisces. <laughs> so I'm always looking forward to Pisces. <coughs> And if you just joined us, we are looking at the week of October the 7th to the 13th, 2019. And now we're looking to the star sign of Pisces. And yes, I have decided to get rid of the wallpaper <laughs> eventually and just um, 
use paint, right? I'm, I'm not necessarily saying it's ugly, but it is um, it is a bit weird for, for my eyes, right? I just see it here in my monitor, so I don't know why I'm <laughs> going on about it. Anyway, let's look at, at our spices for this week. Oh, interesting. The guides gave us three symbols to look at. Wow. Awesome. Sometimes when I do these readings, obviously they're, they're, they're basically the idea is everybody who watches it, um, it's for these people, if that makes sense, right? It's the same thing, you know, you, you, buy, you buy a magazine and there's some horoscopes in it. They're not always right, but it has been my experience that when people find these readings, the stuff, there's stuff in there for their stars and it makes sense. And yet this week, the first week that I'm back doing this, it's, it feels like it is what I need to hear, if that makes sense. It doesn't mean it's not for you. All I'm saying is I feel personally um, elated. I feel like, wow, that's exactly what I needed to hear. So thanks, guys. But it also means because we have a, a week of new beginnings, right? So maybe it is time for me to just look forward, right? Because that's what we got, Pisces. We got the mountain goat, the coyote, and the golden eagle. The mountain goat is the animal that hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall, which means we will be fine. No matter what life throws at Pisces this week, 7th to the 30th of October, we will just be fine. It's also a card that talks of um, financial stability. And it doesn't mean that all of a sudden, you know, the money that never quite lasted the whole month will all of a sudden last the whole month. No, but it means, you know, there will always be enough food in your cupboard even if you struggle, if that makes sense. There will always be enough, because that's also in the second symbolism, which is the coyote. The coyote is a scavenger. So um, he doesn't go kill most of the time. He just basically looks for stuff, and therefore he has to have a trust system, right? He just smells it out. And what the guides are saying is, as a, as a symbolism, there will always be enough to go around for us Pisces, right? So. Any worries about, oh shit, I haven't got the money, that kind of stuff, that gets us all low, energetically speaking, we, 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 we mustn't have this week, right? We have to go, to financial stability is, is coming, if that makes sense, right? Um, we will be fine, but also trust that there will always be enough for you to go around. And lastly, we have the golden eagle. And that's the symbol that says, any changes that affect us massively, Excuse me, we will see them coming, right? So we're not at any risk, if that makes sense. That doesn't mean if someone gets a letter that they weren't expecting and says like, you know, you still owe us 2,000 pounds for blah, 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 <laughs> if that makes sense, right? That's not the change they're saying. It's what they're also saying, should you be one of those people that all of a sudden, sudden gets bad news with regards to, to money that you need to pay because you have the coyote and the mountain goat. What they're saying is, well, call these people can't tell them to F off, you know, <laughs> but you, you call them and you say, like, this is the money I have, and I'm offering you monthly payment, weekly payment, whatever it is. What the guides are saying is don't go into panic. I don't know why they're bringing this up. They're doing this, which means there's a, for some of you, there's uh, letters coming, and um, it means there's something that needs to be paid, right? Obviously, it's not for all Pisces kind of thing. I certainly won't get any letters saying that, <laughs> right? To so, so cut a long story short, all they're saying is nothing to worry about this week, okay? And then because like we have the, the golden eagle, which the, the animal sees his food from a mile away, what they're saying is don't worry. You know, we will see things that, that, that affect us coming. So no nasty surprises this week. Okie dokie, that was Pisces going into Aries. Let's see what we got for Aries. And can I just ask you all, when you watch these readings, to share them. I always say that share them widely. <laughs> and then I have sort of almost always the same kind of numbers. So I know the people that have um, followed me, have been following me for a while, are watching it. But hardly anyone shares. And it's important to share this because this is free advice, right? Um, the guides give this to me. Um, I'm doing this to get the word out, so please share this widely. Right? So we're with Aries now. 
Let's see what you got. Okay. Aries have birds, plural, and the raven. What they're saying to you is, see things this week from a higher point of view. This is especially important for those Aries that are feeling bogged down. You go to the same crap on a daily basis. What I'm getting here is, is um, especially work-related things, where you kind of feel like, you know, I'm going to this dreadful job every single day and it doesn't fulfill me. And when your brain goes like, yeah, but I need the money, then you're closing the door. What you need to say is, this job doesn't give me fulfillment. This job hurts me. This job makes me tired. So, therefore, you deserve better. And when you deserve better, you begin manifesting that something that has the same money coming in um, can come to you. You understand that sometimes we're manifesting wrong because we feel like without that particular job, I can't pay my rent. And the reality is if you come to your, your work tomorrow and all of a sudden they tell you actually we're broke, there's no more money coming, you know, you will find a way. It's just how life works. All of a sudden you will find a way to deal with things. So don't go into, into fear and worries, right? And so what they're saying is, look at the vantage point. See everything from a higher point of view before you actually react. And then you have the raven, which is the animal of magic and transformation. So what they're saying is, right, you're going through stuff that haven't quite been finished yet, right? So there's a lot of stuff where you are changing in the process and people around you are changing. Therefore, it is very hard to make assessments. What I'm getting from the guides is for those of you who, who say like, oh, you know, I put my application in, will I actually get the job? At this point in time, the way the guides say it to me, it hasn't been decided. So the guides can't tell you because it takes more than one person to make that decision, if that makes sense. So it's just a, a scenario. But what the guides are saying, sometimes they're sort of, um, you know, wondering, will this all work this weekend? And then we're going into panic. And what the guides are saying to, to Aries, uh, don't go into panic. Right? Not everything has been decided yet, and there's always space for improvement, which there needs to be. And because there's also magic, it means you know the higher your energy is, the better this is. What I'm getting strongly for Aries is to actually um, carry a crystal with you, in your pocket or on a pendant. Right? Um, uh, crystals have uh, a multitude of, of positive things they can do to you and for you. You know, find one that that you that that, um, that speaks to you, and just carry this <coughs> for this week, just to be aligned, be more grounded, but also be a bit stronger in how you communicate this week, right? So <coughs> that was Aries talking about the next star sign. Now we're going into Taurus. Tauruses. My father and my sister are both Tauruses, and my sister, bless her, <laughs> sent me a care packet from Germany. He's like, at all the German chocolate that I had as a child, right? And um, I got this about three days ago, and half the box is already empty. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to share this with you because we're going into Tauruses. Okay, so let's see what the, what the week 7th to the 13th of October 2019 has got for Tauruses. Okay, oftentimes when Taurus energy presents itself, it feels like friction. It feels like, uh, you know, there's always a bit of friction. There's always a bit of fighting in the air, or oftentimes there is. And what you have is the shaman of stars and the ancestor of illusion. And what that really means is, this week, don't respond to the same impetus, right? If people come to you with the same problems and you always have the same reply and then it doesn't go anywhere, what the guides are saying is don't do this. The Shaman of Stars tells you to look into your spirituality, look at your higher self, right? They're coming from the stars, right? If that makes sense, aspects of dust and now we evolved here. But we are coming from the stars and what the guides are saying is Look at your higher self, communicate with your guides and ask them for guidance, hence the word, and um, for help, if that makes sense, right? So this week is a week 
where your spirituality that you carry inside you, that spiritual being that you truly are, is the one that ought to be nurtured. Because you have the ancestor of illusion. Ancestor just really means that this, this whatever is going on has been going on for a while, you carry it over, you allow it to re-happen, these kind of things. And the ancestor of illusion tells you that you have known for a while that some things aren't working anymore and any longer. And the guides are saying is if that's your conclusion, then it is your job to also say, you know what, I'm going to change that now. Really, really important. And because we have a week of new beginning, this is the perfect week for uh, Tauruses to um, make changes, if that makes sense. Okay, here we go. But energetically speaking, it feels a bit heavy. So um, because the energy around many Tauruses is already a bit heavy, you need to have an extra deep breath. Right? The, the breath that I always um, give to my clients and to myself is this one. You take it from the solar plexus to the throat, you go, and then you exhale with a f sound because you're then using the, the, the air of the abdomen. I'll show you this quickly. So, so it's, it's that kind of thing that, that keeps you grounded or gets you grounded in seconds. So here it is. It's not only for uh, um, Tauruses, by the way, but um, it comes up here. So that's the breath that I do um, when I think, okay, I need to be grounded here, you know, before I actually uh, respond. So this is what I do. And you can do this two or three times, but it actually <coughs> lowers your heart rate immediately. Really, really powerful uh, breathing. That is uh, a good thing to do, even if you can't do the hand movement because you're on a public loo somewhere or, or, or you're just about to go into a meeting. You could just remember you're going into this meeting with all these dimwits that are your bosses <laughs> kind of thing, you know. And you talk about stuff you don't really believe in, you go... And you can do that in no time, and you go in there stronger, more settled, right? Okay, that was um, <coughs> Tauruses going into Gemini. Gemini. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Another heavy energy. And this is also what I often have said when the reading, as the readings progress. Sometimes you have obviously overlapping energies, which means one star sign follows the others, and there can be um, an overlapping energy from the one before going into the current one. And sometimes all star signs <coughs> energetically um, really affect one another. So, in other words, you have Gemini, and it is it is not quite, but almost as heavy as um, Taurus felt. So we have the week of new beginning and the hunter of vision, where you kind of go like, okay, take a deep breath. What do I actually want? It's time to start anew, right? And here is what you got, because you got the kid fox and the great horned owl. So a lot of um, Geminis already feel boxed in, feel there's less opportunity for me, there isn't much happening, I can't quite get there, right? So that is what we call lower energy. And even if it is true that you kind of think like, you know, at the moment I can't change a thing, you know, it's all shite kind of thing, that might be the truth. But remember, you carry any energy that you create. So if you say like, all oh, crap, that's exactly how you will feel because that's what you're basically focusing on. It's easier said than done, right? I mean... <laughs> You know, I give advice for a living and I have difficult and shitty times. So I'm not saying it's easy, but remember this, you attract on your energy. So when you kind of feel like it's all bad, which is the kid fox, where the kid fox are saying, you know, I'm a fox, I'm an old soul. And yet I live in the desert where there's less opportunities and food is sparse. So that's the symbolism that they're saying to you is, you, you know, um, you can either just, you can either just get on with it or get annoyed with the um, with the lack of opportunities at this point in time. And what they're, what they're saying to you is don't, because we have the great horned owl, the owl 
draws an auditory map, which means she can hear the mouse in the undergrowth, so she can catch the mouse without getting caught in the undergrowth. What they're saying to you this week is to um, do everything slowly, right? but listen. Listen to what's going on around you and trust that when, when opportunities, no matter how small, present themselves, you will go for them without getting caught in anything that isn't working. So in other words, if someone says like, oh, I know you have a really bad job. Um, my cousin has a company, they're looking for people. <coughs> and, and you will kind of normally go like, oh yeah, right? You will know by just assessing and listening to the vibes that come of the message that you've just been given, if this is actually a good move or a bad move. So you're not going from bad to worse when you realize that you have the power to, to sense, to be an empath, to know when opportunities come to you, whether or not they actually work. Right? Okie dokie. That was a Gemini going into Cancer. Let's have a look what we got for Cancerians this week, October the 7th to the 13th, 2019. Okay, you have the ancestor of memory and the companion. What the guides are saying to, to Cancerians is, you will rethink a lot of your past commitments and you will look at your current situation. And the companion is, is, is sort of saying, you know, so you could look at your current girlfriend your current boyfriend and just look at that situation that you're in and then all the memories that come in from anything else um, could affect your relationship because you're looking for triggers or you're looking for something that isn't there. And all the guides are saying is because you have the unsubtle memory, it's important to let all the memories that come to you come to you and be honest about how you truly feel. So if you look at your partner, your girlfriend, and you kind of go, you know, I actually miss this. That doesn't mean you can get back to this, but you will realize it's actually not there, right? And then you can either talk about it, hopefully you find it in that relationship, you know, or, or not. All the guides are saying is this will be a reflective week. This will be a week where all of a sudden, you know, new beginnings, you know, hunter of focus, you know, hunter of focus, hunter of vision, where all of a sudden you go like, whoa, I can't get this out of my head. I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that, that happened in, in my past, reasoned or otherwise. And all the guides are saying is, don't send it away. Really reflect, okay. because we have the week of new beginnings. It is the week to then say, okay, now whatever needs to be solved, looked at, I will look at. Right? Really, really important for, for Cancerians to look at the things that come into your mind, right? Okie dokie, sounds easy enough, but energetically speaking, what I get for Cancerians this week is that sometimes you're in the way, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? And all the guys are saying is don't be in the way, just allow yourself some me time where you can properly reflect on things, right? And that's, and that's all it is. But because you have the companion which doesn't always mean a current partner, it just means that you're going towards something that is worth having. You're not going it alone for much longer, if that makes sense, right? That's why the guides are saying is if you reflect first for what still sits inside you, it makes more sense. Okie dokie, and remember, Cancerians, you can be your worst en enemy and you just get busy again and therefore old patterns or whatever this is, don't really break that easily. Okie dokie, that was Cancerians. You know, we're nearly done. We, we, we're going into Leo and Virgo, and then we're done. So let's go into Leo. I always find that incredible. I said that earlier, that, uh, that they are overlapping energies, and it's the same here. We just talked about Cancerians, and now we have Leo, 
and Leo has the shaman of reflection and they have the journeyer. So we have the companion, now you have the journeyer. What it, what it means is for your Leos, you are the person that goes on the journey. You are the person that decides where the journey takes you. You are also the person that needs to allow at times to not know where you're going and go anyway, right? So that you are the journeyer, you are the person that goes through all of these things. And because you have the shaman of reflection, it's this, almost the same, but actually it feels the same. Like, like Kamsarians, where they're saying is, reflect on what you bring from your life into anything new. Remember, we have the hunter of vision, right? Is there anything you need to let go? Is there anything that keeps you from entering a new relationship, entering a new job? Is there anything that happened in your past, recent or otherwise, that affects you now? that it could also affect the outcome of anything new, right? So again, it's a reflective week. And because here you have the shaman of reflections, it's your main, your main message. So all the guys are saying is you're on the journey, right? Which is good, you're on the journey. And some journeys take a long time, some journeys are short. And all the guys are saying is you're already on it, right? So they're not asking you to stop or do anything. All they're saying is, Instead of thinking or thinking, oh, I hope this works, and why isn't this working, sort of this panic mode, what they're saying is, no, take me time. What they're showing me is people having tea in their own home, just having a tea, right? It's probably because I live in England. I think if I, if I lived in Germany, they would have shown me coffee, <laughs> kind of thing, right? Um, so, you know, that's what they're showing me. It's just like, take me time, sit somewhere with a cup of tea, you know, cake is also always quite good, mm, right? <laughs> and reflect and and you can do this all week in other words also don't be rushed by anything right and it's like i said it's very interesting that we had cancerians and now we have leo and we have this overlapping energy very strong so it almost feels to me or it feels to me as if cancer and leos are in a cluster of the same type of energy if that makes sense even though with cancerians it was about the companion looking at at where you are at, while with Leos it's about the journey itself, right? But that's the only difference. Energetically speaking, it is time to not stop, but maybe put things on hold, you know, plans put, put them on hold, and just re be reflective and have a look. Because this is why the guides asked all of us, in many ways, to be reflective, is because we are, we are, we are entering anything new with our own baggage, right? We're all damaged goods, if that, if that makes sense. It always reminds me of this Motorhead song, move over for a damaged case. <laughs> we are all, <coughs> in many ways, damaged goods. And so, you know, it's all right. Let, let's be damaged, right? And all we, all we need to ask is, is, is for healing. And that's what this is. You reflect, and when you reflect, you figure out, oh, that's how I, feel, I, I really feel. And if you can't find it in, within you to, to make changes, that's also fine, right? Don't, don't rush things, if that makes sense, right? Be yourself. And if you, if you made a mistake this week, where you kind of go like, okay, I should have solved this, right? Don't put a timeline on it. All the guides are saying is, this is the week, overall energy for new beginnings. But your new beginning, both Cancerian and Leo, will be much better when you actually reflect on the life journey that in many ways made you who you are. It's also important, that's what I'm getting again, they're giving me both star signs at the same time. So this is also, um, even though we're talking about Leo now, it feels like it's still for Cancerians too. So I hope you Cancerians just didn't only watch one star sign because apparently they're, they're putting it together here. Right? So what I'm getting is, is to, to reflect and also pay attention to the things that you did that are your responsibility to look at and to deal with. It's always easy to, to deflect and say, because of A, B, and Z, I end up here. And even though that may be true, right, it oftentimes takes two to tango and there are situations where you maybe weren't uh, quite as mature as you are right now. That's why the guides are saying is all you need to do is me time and reflect and find your true feelings and then go from there. 
All right, so that was Leo slash Cancerian, because like I said, it's, it's not common, but they um, gave me the energy of both star signs at once. So Cancerians had their message that wasn't for Leo, but the Leo message equally is for Cancerians. So in, in, in a way, they made this um, a bit larger for Cancerians. So that was Leo. Now we're going into Virgo, which is the, the last star sign of um, this week. Here we go. We um, I always make this here on, on the video. You can see uh, Facebook, you know, dot com forward slash energy and star sign readings. That's the page I want you to share with people because sometimes I share it with people on their walls, and then you know Facebook doesn't allow me to share it. That many times, obviously, I made a page for this. If you can direct people to this page, it helps everybody, right? Because I'm recording this, this is my time, I have to edit this a little, I have to upload this. I want to reach the people that need to hear the messages that come from the guides. So please, please, please share this widely, right? Last star sign uh, for today is Libra. Uh, right. <laughs> okay, another not super difficult, but another heavy energy for this week for Libra. Remember, this is the week for new beginnings. This is the week for the, for the focus of vision, the hunter of vision, right? So this is all about looking at where are we, what do I really want? But the uh, Virgos have the hunter of conflict and the spirit of truth. So there are things that are difficult. The hunter of conflict means it is important that you chase these conflicts so they are no longer bothering you in your life and make things difficult right hunter of conflict means i'm i'm focusing on it and i will confront it and then you have the spirit of truth which means you confront it you speak your mind the way you feel it you express yourself it's mainly about expression. You express yourself so whatever it is that is still the elephant in the room can finally be released, right? So not the easiest of things to do, but they're asking you to be to be proactive. All right, that was our last star sign of the week. Um, thank you all very much. And um, like I said, I will try my best to do this more regularly and I ask you to share this widely. Okie dokie, thank you very much. See you very soon, bye-bye.